Science and technology continually amaze us with new inventions. Can science bring us world peace? Or will the world become hell on earth? What does Bible prophecy predict for the 21st century? Will Jesus Christ come back to save the world? Will he come back during this 21st century? What prophetic signs will signal his return? And when he does return, will you be ready? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World presents Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames John O'Gwen bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world this week Richard Ames explores prophecy in the 21st century and now Richard Ames warm greetings to you all Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ told his disciples of the prophetic signs that would herald his second coming. He warned us that regional wars, world wars, famines, disease epidemics, and earthquakes will dramatically affect the world. Those prophetic signs will signal the final sequence of events leading up to his second coming. Are we getting close to a second coming? What prophetic event should we be watching for in this 21st century? On today's program, we'll examine Bible prophecy and prophetic events we should expect in the 21st century. And we'll be offering you a free booklet that will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. Be sure to write down the phone number and address to order your free copy. You can also order our free literature and audio tapes on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Bible prophecy outlines the future. It gives us warning and it gives us hope. You need to study and to understand your Bible and Bible prophecy. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew 24, verse 4. Jesus' disciples wanted to know when he would return to earth and set up his kingdom. Jesus gave several prophetic signs. He warned them to be on guard against false religions. We all need to test the many religious messages we see and hear by reading our Bibles. What did Jesus say here in Matthew 24? Matthew 24 and verse 4. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Yes, there has always been war. Yes, there have always been famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. But, my friends, we entered the age of nuclear destruction in the last century. As we pointed out on previous programs, mankind has not solved the problems of war and peace. We face even greater dangers in the 21st century. Nations have invented new weapons of mass destruction. Mankind is yet to conquer new diseases and upset weather. Do we really think, for example, that we can prevent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions? My friends, we really need to face reality. Jesus warned us in Matthew 24, verse 7, that there would be earthquakes in various places. There have been devastating earthquakes, even in the last ten years. In Southern California, my wife and I and millions of others experienced the January 17, 1994 San Fernando Valley earthquake. That frightening earthquake caused damage estimated up to $20 billion. And then exactly one year later, on January 17, 1995, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake hit Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe, Japan, causing an estimated $100 billion in damage. 5,100 were killed, and 26,800 were injured. Let's look at Jesus' prophetic warning in Luke's parallel account in Luke 21. Luke 21, verse 11. Jesus said, There will be great earthquakes in various places. 
Perhaps you feel secure because your city or your region has no history of earthquakes. In a Time Magazine cover story, January 30th, 1995, author George J. Church wrote the following, quote, Earthquakes are unpredictable. They almost invariably strike not only at times, but at places nobody expects. And no one quake is exactly like any other. End of quote. Will we see even greater earthquakes in the 21st century? According to the U.S. Geological Survey, in the last century, the world experienced, on average, about 140 earthquakes each year of magnitude 6 or above. In just the first six months of 2003, severe earthquakes killed thousands and left hundreds of thousands homeless. On May 21, 2003, a magnitude 6.8 quake hit northern Algeria, killing more than 2,000 people and leaving 200,000 people homeless. And let's not forget about the 7.6 magnitude quake that shook Colima, Mexico on January 22, 2003. Had that quake occurred in a more densely populated area, the damage could have almost been unprecedented. Do you remember the January 26, 2001 quake in Gujarat, India? More than 20,000 people were killed, and 160,000 were injured. More than one million buildings in Gujarat were either damaged or destroyed. So far, God has spared the United States and much of our Western world from that kind of devastation. But what can you expect in the future? Will there be even more severe earthquakes in the years ahead? The book of Revelation mentions several earthquakes. After two and one half years of the Great Tribulation, spoken of by Jesus in the Olivet Prophecy, the sixth seal of Revelation introduces the Day of the Lord. I hope you've been able to study with our audio tapes and articles on the subject. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 6 and verse 12. Here is described the sixth seal, or the heavenly signs. Notice what happens. Revelation 6 and verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. This particular earthquake, along with the astronomical phenomena, introduces the day of the Lord, the year preceding the second coming of Christ to this earth. Let's continue in verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who is able to stand? The earth will be in turmoil. There will be many powerful earthquakes, and every mountain and island will be moved out of its place. This is the time of God's judgment on the nations. It's called the day of the Lord. And here in Revelation 6.17, it's called the great day of his wrath. Turn in your Bible to Hebrews 12 and verse 25. Notice what God says is going to happen to the earth and to the heavens. The writer of Hebrews instructs us, See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Our Father in heaven wants the best for each of us. He's giving carnal humanity a lifetime to learn. If we heed God's warnings, we can escape the most horrendous judgments yet to be executed on our Western nations, and eventually the whole world. My friends, earthquakes are just one important prophetic trend you need to be watching. Your Bible gives many other significant signs. You can read about them in our free booklet entitled, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. Let me share a few of the subheads with you. Sign number four is disease epidemics. Number five, the rise of an aggressive fundamentalist Islamic power. Number six is 
An ascendant European Union seeks global primacy. Are you watching the developments of the European Union? On January 1st, 2002, the euro became the official currency of the European Union. We've reported that significance of the euro in our Prophecy Comes Alive feature of Tomorrow's World magazine. There are exciting times ahead. You need to know the prophetic trends and signs leading up to the end of this age and the return of the Messiah. This free booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return, will help you in your study of the Bible. You can also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. And if you're not already a subscriber to our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, we'll send you a free subscription. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. Just ask for the booklet on the 14 signs. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina. 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that Bible prophecy predicts major signs and events leading up to the return of Jesus Christ. We also saw that the Creator God will shake the earth with powerful earthquakes. Earthquakes often cause giant wave formations that strike coastal areas. In a Science and Technology article, The Economist magazine explores possible new ways of tracking killer waves. Quote, For many inhabitants of the Pacific coast, Powerful waves caused by earthquakes or underwater landslides, generally known by their Japanese name, tsunamis, are an ominous threat. When a wave 15 meters, 50 feet high, pounded the northern shores of Papua New Guinea in July 1998, the inhabitants were taken by surprise. The tsunami killed more than 2,200 villagers, making it one of the most destructive in recent years. But it was just one of a string of killer waves that have struck the Western Pacific over the past few years. Since 1990, 10 big tsunamis have claimed more than 4,000 lives, end of quote. Remember the prophecy we read earlier in the book of Revelation? When the heavenly signs warn us that the day of the Lord is about to begin, what happens? Revelation 6, verse 14. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Yes, my friends, we can expect powerful earthquakes, major tsunamis, and killer waves in the future. Another major trend in our changing planet is the prospect of increasing volcanic eruptions. Time magazine featured an article entitled Volcanoes with an Attitude. That was in February 24, 1997. The article emphasized several danger spots, such as Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, El Popo, or Popo Catapetal, near Mexico City, Mount Rainier in Washington State, the Indonesian chain of at least 127 active volcanoes, and Italy's Vesuvius that spread devastation in 1631. Hundreds of volcanoes are clustered around the well-known Ring of Fire, a tectonically active region surrounding the Pacific Ocean. Will these volcanoes just die, or will they become active to the point of disrupting our whole environment? The Time Magazine article quotes the chief scientist of the USGS Volcano Hazards Program, Robert Tilling. He warns, quote, Someday one of these mountains will erupt on a scale many orders of magnitude greater than mankind has ever seen, end of quote. In January 2002, the African nation of the Congo suffered the violent eruption of Mount Niragongo. More than half a million Congolese were displaced, and the town of Goma was devastated by the volcano blast, which left a trail of death, disease, polluted water, and financial ruin in its wake. As Time magazine quoted one resident, quote, 
Goma almost does not exist anymore, end of quote. Another major volcano, Mount Etna in Sicily, began awakening between 1991 and 1993. The Los Angeles Times article dated August 6, 2001 reported, quote, Lava has gushed from three main sites along a four-mile fissure that have opened up in the mountain during more than 2,000 small earthquakes since July 12th, end of quote. As one Sicilian resident stated philosophically, quote, We can't do anything about it. Only God can do anything about it. So let's sing, end of quote. My friends, there is one thing we can do, and that is to watch and pray always. Turn in your Bible to Luke 21. Jesus warns us against escapism from reality. He tells us here in Luke 21, verse 34, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now listen to Christ's admonition. Verse 36. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We need to be spiritually alert. We need to watch for the prophetic signs Jesus warned us about. And again, our free booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return, will help you to do just that. In fact, one of those prophetic signs is drought and famine. Will drought and famine affect our poorer nations in Africa and around the world? Or will we see extended droughts in the United States, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and New Zealand? Unless we in the Western world wholeheartedly turn to God, we will experience severe punishment. The Creator God gave this warning through the prophet Amos. Amos 4 and verse 7. I also withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. I made it rain on one city. I withheld rain from another city. One part was rained upon, and where it did not rain, the part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. An example of weather forced relocation occurred in China in September 2003. Associated Press reported, quote, Cresting river waters menaced a swath of northern China, threatening to send more people fleeing from the worst flooding in 20 years. Some 510,000 people already have left their homes in Shangxi province because of the overflowing Wai River, end of quote. Can you imagine 500,000 people having to flee from any of our western cities or regions? We need to be watching world trends in the light of Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy predicts both flooding and drought. I might mention here that the ice at the North Pole has been melting. Back around 1994, the ice was six to nine feet thick at the North Pole. In the year 2000, the New York Times News Service reported, quote, ice was generally so thin that sunlight could penetrate and support concentrations of plankton growing under the ice, end of quote. As Dr. Baker reported concerning this worrisome warming trend, quote, it's not only getting warmer, it's getting drier in the parts of the country, including farming zones, that feed much of the nation. A case in point is the crop and cattle country in California. California has only 3% of the nation's farmland, but it grows more than half of the nation's fruits and vegetables. There is fear of a dust bowl in the nation's salad bowl. There is no food for California's cattle. A bone-dry fall killed the grass they normally graze on. So ranchers are trucking in carrots to keep them alive. End of quote. Let's understand. Drought and famine can happen in our modern Western world. Already in the 21st century, we've experienced extended drought in major portions of the United States, Canada, and Australia. Forest fires have also devastated millions of acres. My friends, as we faithfully watch prophetic trends, we can have hope. The hope of the world is the return of Jesus Christ. As these prophetic events occur, we can know that Jesus' return is near. As Jesus said in Luke 21 and verse 28, Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. 
My friends, you need to study your Bible. Learn about the second coming of Christ. For example, read in Revelation, the 11th chapter, verse 15. Here we find good news, the announcement of Christ's coming and his rulership over the earth. Remember the announcement of the seventh trumpet, Revelation 11 and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ will return to rule the nations, and he will conquer the world's armies that come to fight against him. Jesus will return to save human beings from destroying themselves in the final world war. But you need to know what events lead up to his coming. When will he return? Are we in the last days? To help in your study of Bible prophecy, I'd like to offer you an exciting free booklet that will answer those questions. It's titled, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. One of those signs is the danger of nuclear war. World War II introduced the nuclear age with the dropping of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. This informative free booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return, will help you in your study of the Bible and Bible prophecy. You can also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. And if you're not already a subscriber to our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, we'll send you a free subscription. You need to know your future. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. Just ask for the booklet on the 14 Signs. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free if you call this toll-free number 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Many religious groups have predicted Jesus' return. In the past, they've even set specific dates for his return or for an expected rapture long before now. And they've been very disappointed, even disillusioned, when their predictions for Christ's return failed. Then other preachers have embraced another extreme. Christ might come back tonight, or it might be for another thousand years, they say. Now, in one sense, if you die tonight, the next split second of your consciousness, you will be in the resurrection. But both extremes are wrong. Bible prophecy clearly shows that the second coming will not happen tonight. Jesus prophesied major prophetic events that must occur first. To understand Bible prophecy, and what prophetic events will lie ahead in the 21st century, we need an overall framework for the future. There are many different ideas and scenarios regarding the 1,000 years mentioned in the book of Revelation. There are three general teachings concerning the millennium, and only one of them is correct. They are premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism. Premillennialism is the teaching that Christ will return to set up a literal kingdom here on earth for a literal period of 1,000 years. He returns before the millennium. This is what the Bible does teach as a framework for prophecy. We've given you that framework in several programs and in our Tomorrow's World magazine. Postmillennialism wrongly teaches that the world will eliminate evil by human effort through the influence of traditional Christianity and that Christ will return after the millennium. The idea that human effort will bring about the millennium on earth is flawed and non-biblical. The very reason Christ must return is to save this earth from mass destruction and total cosmicide. Now, amillennialism is the belief that the expression of a thousand years in the book of Revelation is purely symbolic of a peaceful relationship with Christ. Certainly, genuine Christians do have a wonderful relationship with God the Father and with our Savior Jesus Christ. But the Bible clearly teaches premillennialism. 
The millennial time of world peace is preceded by the return of Christ. Incredible as it may seem, some sects even now teach that the last days mentioned in Scripture might continue on for two years, or two thousand years, or two million years. Often the implication is, don't study Bible prophecy, it's a distraction. My friends, such statements ignore the very instructions of our Savior. Just after Jesus speaks of his second coming, he states this in Matthew 24 and verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Jesus instructs all his true followers to be knowledgeable about these signs. He said, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. My friends, the time is coming, now in the 21st century, when God is going to intervene even more dramatically than he ever has. Jesus Christ will return to save humanity from self-destruction. He will usher in the kingdom of God on earth. But Jesus also taught us one very fundamental element in our prayers. In what is called the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, Your kingdom come. And he expects that we'll pray about that subject every day, along with a request for our daily bread. Let's look forward with faith and hope to the Messiah's return and is establishing the kingdom of God right here on this earth. The good news is that all nations will ultimately learn the true way to lasting peace, prosperity, and reconciliation. But we must be prepared. In Luke 21, 36, Jesus tells us to watch and pray always. May we all be spiritually alert. Then we can look forward to the return of Christ with confidence, hope, and faith. Thank God his kingdom is coming. Thank God Jesus Christ will return to save us all. You need to be ready for the future. So be sure to request our free booklet on the 14 signs. You need to know the biblical signs announcing Christ's return. So be sure to call or write for the free booklets and tapes we offer on this program and keep watching. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So join us again next week right here at this same time. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina. 28227. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org.